Hey, hey everyone, welcome to the Coding Zoo. If this is your first time joining, my name is Shane, and this is the HTML Building Blocks series. Uh, in this series, we try to cover one or two uh, features of HTML, one video at a time. And today's lesson, which I believe is lesson number 13, we're going to finish covering some HTML5 semantic elements. We're going to cover uh, section and article and the side. I hope that interests you. If so, stick around. We're going to jump right in. Okay, so if you see on my desktop here, I have a uh, my attempt at a drawing to lay out a web page. And of course, this is not set in stone. You can lay out a web page however you like. This is one example. We covered this in the previous lesson, lesson number 12. We went over header and nav and footer, and we went over main. So in this lesson, we're going to cover, of course, section, uh, article, and the side. Let's start by first talking about what a section is and what an article is and what the side is. And there is a lot of information out there that's only partly true or not quite right. So it's kind of a confusing subject if you Google around, try to find an answer for that. Let's go, I'm going to go straight to the source. I'm going to go to... I'm going to go to the W3Org, which uh, is where the specifications are actually printed for these things. All right, so let's look at the section. So if you see on my screen, here's the definition of a section. It says the section element represents a generic section of a document or application. A section in this context is a thematic grouping of content. I think that's what's key, a thematic grouping of content. There's a theme around the content. It's not just a general uh, section divided up for styling. It's a, it's a section that's divided up per the content, uh, typically with a heading. So typically that section has a heading that defines that content. It says here, examples of sections would be chapters, the various tab pages in a tab dialog box, or numbered sections of a thesis. So think of it as, like I mentioned in the previous video, if I had a book, that book has a main topic and I have chapters, those chapters have subtopics or substories. Uh, well, a section is a chapter. Think of it that way. So that's what a section is. So I have my main document inside the main element. I can have different sections that define uh, different subtopics of the main topic of that web page. And you generally want to put a title for each section. You don't have to, but it's probably best. I think that engines like uh, Google and other search engines would use that information to actually sh show people what your page is about, kind of give them an outline of what's on your page. I think that's possible. Let's jump over to the picture real quick. So back to the photo. So here I have my main element and here's are my sections. And these three sections here make up a main topic. Uh, each of these sections would have a title and would have some content uh, that is a subtopic of the main topic. So I can group these sections into an article. I can also just have an article that doesn't have sections. Uh, let's jump back over to the W3Org and uh, let's check out what an article is. Okay, so here's the definition of an article. The article element represents a self-contained composition in a document or page or application or site that is, in principle, independently dis distrib dis <laughs> distributable, 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 <laughs> you can distribute it, <laughs> I can't say that word, uh, or reusable uh, in syndication. This could be from a forum post, a magazine, a newspaper article, a blog. Uh, blah blah blah. I think the point here is is that an article is very much like a section except it can stand alone by itself outside the web page. If you take a section out of a web page, well the relating sections kind of give that section meaning so that section really can't stand alone by itself. An article is content that you can take outside of that web page and put inside of any web page and it would still make sense. It stands alone by itself. That's the difference in an article and a section. Hopefully that makes sense. If not, again, leave some uh, questions below and I'll get back to you. Okay, last one before we jump into the code, let's check out a side. Scroll down here. So a side, uh, it says here that the side element represents a section of a page that consists of content that is related tangently, I said it right, 
tangently related to the content around the aside element and which could be separated from that content, which could be considered separate from that content. Such sections, I hate the way they use the word sections here, uh, let's say these asides uh, are often represented as sidebars in printed topography. I said that right too. I'm getting better. <laughs> All right, it says here the elements can be used for like advertisement or grouping of nav elements or for other content that's considered separated from your main content of your page. So aside, you ever been to a web page? It's got a advertisement on the right that could be an aside. That's one of the things it's used for. Very simple. Okay, hopefully again, that makes sense. If not, send me a question below. I'll get back to you. Um, let's jump into the code. Okay, so I have on my uh, desktop the index and style sheet that was used in the previous lesson. I went ahead and took out the content that we put into the main tag. We're going to add some new content today. Uh, and if you haven't noticed, this is my second lesson using Visual Studio Code. I went ahead and switched from Notepad to Visual Studio Code because it's just a lot easier to use, a lot easier to type. If you want to give it a try, download it. It's free. It's a great, it's a great editor. Uh, Notepad++ is okay. Visual Studio Code is it's, it's, it's pretty awesome. All right, so let's go ahead and start coding. So I have my main content element here. Let's go look at this web page. I'm going to click refresh, make sure we have the latest. Jump back over here. Let's go ahead and add some sections. Um, I could just start by adding different sections here. And uh, I could start by putting a title and, and a paragraph on my main content and then put different sections, which are my subcontent. I prefer to actually wrap that in an article. I don't have to, but I'm going to do that anyway. Uh, so I'm going to start with article ID equals programming technology. So that's what this uh, article is going to cover. I'm going to add some sections now. So before I added the sections, I'm going to go ahead and put a, a title for my article. So. All right, the title, I'm gonna put Web Programming Technologies. I'm gonna add a section below that's a summary of my article. So I'm gonna add a section. I'm gonna give that uh, an ID of doc summary. Okay, in my section, I'm gonna add a subtitle. So I'm going to go down to H2 instead of H1, call this summary, and I'm going to put a summary. So I'm going to cut and paste that real quick, save some time. Okay, I'm going to save it, control S, refresh, there we go. So here's my beginning of my article. I have the article topic and I have a summary um, section. So I have an article with one section. Let's add some more sections real quick. And I'm going to, again, cut and paste, save a little bit of time. If you watch my other videos, you know I recommend that you actually code the code as I do it. Stop the video and actually type in what I type in um, and take your time. Um, you'd, of course, I wouldn't type in all of this content, but you might want to consider stopping the video and typing in the tags just so you can play around with it and get it stuck in your head, get used to it. All right. So I'm going to put in more content. Now what I added here, so we typed in the doc summary, and now I'm gonna start putting, uh, and of course remember this article is about web programming technologies. So subtopics could be those technologies. So my first subtopic is HTML info. It has an HTML title, and it has information that would be about HTML. Same thing for this section, it's CSS-info, that's the ID for it, and I'd have a title of CSS, and then I'd have Paragraphs talking about CSS, JavaScript, so forth. Um, so that's the basic idea. I'm taking a topic and divide it up into subtopics. Those subtopics are put into sections, and each of those sections can have a title. It doesn't have to, but, but it can. Let's check it out. Let's save it. Refresh. There we go. So here's my main topic. Here's my subtopics, and here's my content, and here are my different sections. Pretty simple. Again, sections are subtopics of your main topic. They usually have their own title. An article 
Uh, in this case, it's my main topic for this page, so I really didn't have to put these sections uh, in an article. I just kind of like to do that. Uh, let's go ahead and add another article that really necessarily isn't the main topic of this page that could be just taken out and put into another web page. Let's go ahead and add an article. Okay, I'm going to add one more article. I'm going to give it an ID equals, let's do browser info. Let's do a small article about browsers and how they relate to technology also. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm going to uh, cut and paste again some lorem ipsum. I think that's how you say that, lorem ipsum. All right. So I've added a little content here. I have an article. Uh, that article can be taken out of this page and used somewhere else. Uh, it stands alone by itself. It can stand alone. It's called Browser Info, and the, the topic is Browsers, the History. Uh, let's save it. Refresh. Now, there's my article. Now, according, you know, of course, the user can't tell that it's a separate article. Uh, the way I have it here doesn't matter. Um, the point is, is that when you look at this code, uh, you, you know that this is a standalone piece of information and it can be taken out and used elsewhere. All right, so let's go ahead and add an aside. Uh, we're going to put an aside on the right side. It doesn't have to be on the right. It can be on the left. Let's go ahead and add it. So back to my code. Aside. Okay. So I'm going to call this, uh, I'm going to give this an ID of... What do, we, what do we see most these days on the internet that we, we don't like, but that's essential for people to want to create content for the most part? Um, advertisement. All right, so let's put an advertisement here. I'm going to use another HTML5 element. Hey, a bonus HTML5 element, uh, semantic element. It's called figure. Figure is used to create, um, figure is used to create like an image and put a caption underneath it. So since this is an advertisement, it's a perfect place for it. So let's go ahead. I'm going to cut and paste and add the caption and the image. Okay, so I have an image and I have um, a figure caption. Figure one, learn at the coding zoo. I'm going to save it. Click refresh. Now you notice it's way down here and it's not um, on the side and the image is too large. So let's go ahead and clean this up. Let's go ahead and add some CSS. Let's get this situated correctly on the document. Okay, I'm gonna add CSS around the section. Make sure that it's got a good padding, all of the sections. So I do, uh, so I'm doing an element selector. I'm going to make sure the pattern is like 15 pixels. I'm going to add an element selector for the side. Let's go ahead and set that width to uh, 20%. And I want to set the overflow so we don't have content just flowing out of it accidentally. Overflow hidden. And I'm going to set the image inside of that aside to a uh, width, uh, let's do like 70%. So that side is going to be 20% of this, uh, the document, uh, as far as horizontal, 20%. And the image is going to be 70% of that. Okay. Let's make sure I didn't miss anything. Let's add some. CSS on my article. Now I'm going to add some padding on the article. I'm also going to set the, the two articles width to be like 60% of the page. And that way I can get the aside on the right side of it. So the article will take, the articles will take up this 60% and the aside will take up this part of the browser, like 20%. Padding 15 pixels. Let's do width 60%. And let's do a float. I want it to float to the left. I want all my articles to float to the left. 
and let's do a margin around those articles to separate my articles from my aside. We'll do 10 pixels. I just got an Instagram. Okay, let's do um, an overflow here also. Make sure that's hidden. Don't want it to overflow. We'll hidden, use hidden for now. And I want to real quickly go down to my, um, I go up to my footer and I want to add a clear. I want it to clear on both sides. I want to make sure the floats don't affect it. I think that's it. Let's save it and let's try it out. So just to refresh, I put an article, uh, CSS, I put a pattern, which is the space on the inside, 15%. I made the article widths to be 60%, and I made it float to the left of the document, and I put a margin of space on the outside at 10 pixels. Uh, overflow, I just want to make sure the content stays within my article. If it, then with this overflow, if it, if it's the content's too big, it kind of is hidden. Uh, probably not the best setting, uh, but uh, good for now. Aside again, 20%, and it's going to uh, float up um, to the right side. Let's click refresh. There we go. Okay, so I have my main article here. I have my aside here with my image and advertisement. You can put more information here and a link to go to some product. And I have my secondary article right here. Browsers in the history. Now notice how there's more uh, padding around this. There's like double padding here from the article tag and from um, the sections, right? So it makes uh, this article starts here and this article starts here. This is tabbed out a little more, makes it look a lot better. So you can tell those are kind of two different articles. How's that look? Pretty good? Not too bad? Not too bad, I think. And that's it. Not, not much to it. Very simple, very easy. Um, I would make it a point of you know writing down those definitions. Uh, you can use my notes here of what a section or article is so you can remember that. If you have any questions, again, let me know. Leave a message below. How did you like this video? What other HTML5 elements would you like to cover? Answer those questions below. I'll definitely uh, take note of that and get back to you and maybe even do a video on what you suggest. So, hey, thanks for joining. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, click subscribe and click like. And we hope to see you next time. Have a good week.